My name is Gloria Lee. And my name is John Abel. I have been in the media and tech industry for over 15 years. I love helping media companies grow using new technology. I'm one of the technical directors of the office of the CTO here with Inside Google Cloud. And have worked in a variety of, of roles in companies, including Accenture, Deloitte, Miramax and Fox. I've also worked at Endeavor Streaming and for an AIML startup. Most of my time is based on the innovative technology that Google develops and also transformation with inside customers across multiple industries, including the media and entertainment industry. Data is shared uh, in a variety of ways in the media and entertainment ecosystem. So usually the information around top performers is shared, whether it's uh, most watched TV shows or movies or most binged content or uh, domestic box office information. And that information drives a lot of uh, revenue for, for media companies. I think the importance today is that the, with inside technology, there's three categories of data. There's the data you own, which is the private data, and then there's the public data you can add on top to enrich it and give you new lenses of it. What we're seeing is that one aspect that's happened in all industries and entertainment media is no different, that actually this, this personalization and this hyper-personalization means you have to add more data lenses on. And then probably the most valuable data is generated data, typically from machine learning or AI, where you're seeing new insight in data that gives you new opportunities. Technology has played a huge role in terms of the volume of, of content that, that is in the marketplace because uh, the technology has enabled media companies to distribute more. And as a result of that, uh, more content is produced and there are more opportunities to leverage uh, key moments in that content using AIML technology. So AIML technology, artificial intelligence and machine learning is what enables people to quickly look through their content to find relevant moments for marketing purposes. The most important metrics for media companies are, are the top performers. So what, which shows or, or films or short clips of content are, are being watched the most? Who is watching that content? Who is watching that content will drive marketing and, and revenue decisions. And that type of content is also likely to be reproduced again. So it's almost like that lends into, into the top performers using potentially AIML technology to see what, what, is, what is performing the best helps media companies continue to grow their bottom line. One of the things that I feel that we're moving into is that actually the, the value of data is now starting to be realized. And, you know, one of the aspects we're seeing across all industries is that when we used to deal with what we call the commercial contracts of like video sharing or collaborating, we now have to think about the data contracts. And actually, because those data attributes need to be visible, and especially when you're dealing with the micro segments of media content, when you're trying to catalog it, when you're trying to identify key stars or characters in it, these aspects are critical because people search on terms. Now you have to search for the content you want. It's very direct to what you're actually wanting at that point and it changes highly dynamic. This trend is happening in the media industry today. When content distribution deals are made, that, that component, the data piece, how much is shared about viewing patterns uh, per film or per TV show, that information is, is critical to helping grow media businesses. With any type of change, there's usually three categories of groups. There's a group that's really excited about the change, there's a group that really could, could care less about the change, and then there's a group that's completely opposed to the change. So in terms of advice for the foreign organization, it's really tapping into the, the leaders for those three different groups within the company and, and trying to get them on board and seeing what their drivers are. As much as this is a change in technology for the media business, it's always about the people at the end of the day. Um, so it's there is a tight connection between the business and the technology and, and the people. So it's really getting the people on board um, around the business drivers that are ultimately driving the technology decision. And I think that again, entertainment and media is gonna be similar to other industries where actually getting the data in a meaningful state closer to the business owner is gonna be essential. They can't afford large technology projects. 
that's where we're introducing new technology that allows the business user to get closer to the data at an accelerated pace. Getting the user closer to the data so that having a tighter connection between the technology and the business and the value that data can provide uh, could really help companies move forward faster and, and really take advantage of the things that come along with, with new technology and what data can provide. I'll give you three tips in the entertainment and media industry of what we're seeing. Tip one is real-time trends. We're seeing customers that are using uh, Google Cloud are working out the trends in their data in a much more real-time fashion than ever before at the executive la layer. This trends could be service quality, it could be the demand on what the viewers are wanting and how they're wanting it, and it could be insight to planning of the future. The second element we're seeing is where they're now moving some of the business logic right to the front of the edge of how the recipient is using technology. So elements like federated learning, it's basically a running machine learning at the edge and it's giving the processing at the edge, meaning that only the aggregated data comes back to the center, which means the insight's not lost, or but the privacy is kept. And then the last aspect is actually understanding trends outside of their industry that impact entertainment and media and actually looking at data about using data of knowing what type of media to use, what type of content to show, and actually looking at the greater impact that's outside of their specific domain. So if you think about it, what we're actually doing with our customers in entertainment and media is actually providing the ability to scale their data needs allow them to enrich it using new data sets and more importantly giving their executives visibility to this data at speeds they've never seen before. There is now a direct connection between how the viewer looks at an organisation and looks at their sustainability credentials and actually knowing how they produce the films, how they produce the programmes what is the carbon footprint? This will become a theme that will get traction. If you look at it, then actually many sports are already going this route. You've got like the electric vehicles, you've got sailing events where they're looking at carbon neutral. What we typically see, the trends go through technology, through sports, and then into entertainment and media. So I feel there will be a trend where media companies have to actually articulate their sustainability to their viewers to make sure that in the future that they're seen as green entertainment. Now the great thing is data gives you insight to how you share that and actually how you capture that and how you can articulate it. You know it will be interesting to say that in the future one of these hyper films will actually be fully carbon neutral and it'll be interesting to see how the viewers take that and how they warm to it.